Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, the good people at Archon Studio sent me two sets of their Dungeons & Lasers terrain to review on the channel. I have already posted a review. You can find a link to that review in the video description below. But I did say in my review that I wanted to put some paint on this terrain, and that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to paint up the Abomination Vault set, which was made in conjunction with Peso for use with the Abomination Vault's adventure path. And if we look at the box for the terrain, we can see some beautiful, professionally painted terrain. And that's not what I'm going to be doing in this video. Personally, as a dungeon master, I love having painted terrain and miniatures to put down on the table. But I know a lot of dungeon masters have a lot of things that they need to be thinking about. They're constantly thinking about the adventure and the next part of the story. And they may not have a lot of time to get things painted to a really high standard. So in this video, I'm going to look at a way to try to emulate the look of this cover here in a very, very quick and simple way. So don't expect it to look as nice as the box art, but I think it's a good enough tabletop standard to have really good looking dungeons for your heroes to explore. And in the Abomination Vault box, you get six frames of terrain like this. They are all exactly the same. That's really good because it means you can paint this up in a production line method. And I'm going to start by spraying all of the frames with Chaos Black. I find that with terrain like this, it's much easier to undercoat it on the frame, then cut it out of the frame, and then just use a little black out of the pot on anywhere where there was a connecting point that you had to cut. It's going to save a lot of headaches when it comes to spraying both sides of the terrain. By keeping it on the frame, it just speeds up the whole process. And if you really want to, you can paint the whole thing on the frame and just cut it off at the end and do any touch-ups right at the very end. But I have removed everything from the frames, and you can see there are marks wherever I have had to cut frame away. So we are going to use our black, and I'm just going to very quickly go around the edge of every single piece, covering up those marks. And of course, if you missed any areas when you were spraying the miniatures, this is your opportunity to fill in those areas now. Next, it's time to get out the trusty Mechanicus Standard Grey. And this is quite a nice grey, it's kind of a little bit of a blue hint to it, but if you want to go for something much bluer, you can do maybe a wolf grey or something to really go for a more ethereal blue look for the stones. But I've gone for Mechanica Standard Grey, and what I'm doing here is an overbrush or a wet brush. It's like a dry brush, but you leave a lot more paint on the brush. You very quickly move the brush over the surface of the miniature. It's going to pick out all of the raised details, all of the flat surfaces. Really, the only things that the brush is not going to touch are those deep recesses. And that's fine, that's what we're looking for here. We want all of those recesses to show up. And then when it's completely dry, I'm just going to switch to Ulthuan Grey and I'm going to do a very, very heavy dry brush. So this is a dry brush, not an overbrush. And we're going to pick out all of the highest areas on all of the stonework. On the floor pieces, I'm going to use large circular motions and I'm really going to put a lot of paint on here. Really to try and bring out every single detail. And on the walls, it's a matter of picking out all those edges, all of those raised stone areas, all of those little tentacle details. And at that point, you already have something that's starting to look decent. But there are a few little metal details on some of the elements, like this tile here has a grate in it. So we're going to pick out those details with lead belcher. I've thinned the lead belcher a little bit so it goes on nice and smoothly. It's always a good idea to thin your paints a little bit. You can apply two coats if you need to. But we're going to mark in all of those metal details and then I'm going to get my non oil and I'm going to put a wash of non oil over all of those metal areas and that's just going to dingy it up a little bit. The other thing you can do with non oil at this point if you want to is you can paint any stones that are set back from the most raised areas and you can line in around all of the tentacle details. This isn't a necessary step but what it can do is it can make the details pop even more and it can also blend where you have been doing the dry brushing. Dry brushing can look a little bit dusty sometimes. By using the washes, you can help to make it look a little bit smoother. If we look at these two wall sections here, the top wall section has not had any non oil applied. The bottom wall has had non oil applied. It has gone onto all of the stones that are set back and it has gone all around those tentacle details and in the eye detail at the top. It's up to you if you want to take that extra step. Next, I'm switching to matte white. There are some little candles here on the back of this long wall section. We're just going to mark those in with the matte white. Obviously being careful not to go over any of the gray we've already painted. And if you really want to, you can leave this out. It's not absolutely necessary to paint these candles. I don't think many people would really even notice they were there. 
but we're also going to use matte white on the torches. You get two little torches on each frame, which hang on little holes set into some of the walls. And I'm going to do my little simple recipe for a burning torch on these, which starts with a coat of matte white. Next, I'm switching to Holy White, which is a speed paint from the new Army Painter speed paint range. And I'm just going to apply a very small amount of this over the candles. It just adds a little bit of shading and detail. We're moving on to the doors now, and I'm starting with Balthazar Gold. And I'm doing, again, an overbrush. So not quite a dry brush, a little bit more paint on the brush than that. So I'm going over all of the details of the hinges, the keyhole, and the metal surround. And then I'm switching to Mornfang Brown. I'm going to thin this down and I'm going to apply this to the wooden area. So all of the recessed areas of the door, leaving all of that metallic area showing. I've thinned this down quite a lot. So I have a nice amount of control over it. And I'm only going to apply a single coat because of the way I'm going to be painting the rest of the door. If you want to apply two coats, you can do. But I found that one was good enough. The aim is just to be neat and not to get it over the metal. Then, of course, it's time for Agrax Earthshade. I can't do a painting guide without Agrax Earthshade, and this is going to go all over the wooden area. Again, don't apply it to the tentacles, don't apply it to the metal trim or the keyhole. Just apply a good amount over the wooden area, making sure that you do get it pulled all around all of the metal detailing, so you get some nice definition. Then I'm switching to Liberator Gold and I'm going to do a dry brush over the metal areas just on the very raised details. This is just to give it that nice spot highlight, a little bit of a bright contrast over the Balthazar Gold, which is a much more muted gold color. And if you get a little bit on the wood, it doesn't really matter because afterwards I am going to go back to my Mornfang Brown. I'm thinning it down again and I'm going to apply one more coat of Mornfang Brown, making sure that I keep those darker shades in the recesses. I'm also using the Mornfang Brown for the wooden parts of the torches. And then once that wood is dry, we can make it look like the torches are burning. We're going to start with Flash Gits Yellow and I'm doing something which isn't quite a dry brush because what I'm doing is I've got an old brush here and I'm stabbing the paint over the white. I want a lot of the white to show through and I don't want any solid areas of yellow. I want it to be stippled on all over the white. Then I'm switching to Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm doing the same sort of thing again here. It's sort of half dry brush, half stabbing because I don't want any solid blocks of color for the red anywhere. I want a lot of that white and a lot of that yellow to carry on showing through. The fun thing with fire is when you're painting it, you paint in reverse. You start with your lightest colors and you work up to your darkest colors. And that is why our last color going on is Abaddon Black, which is just a very, very light dry brush just on the very ends. And that is done. That is a finished thing. We can now assemble the whole thing. And this is what we have. It is by no means up to the standard of the paintwork that you see on the box art for this product, but when you've got this all put together, I think it looks decent. And what we have here is the entire contents of one of the six sprues. These pillars just move out. They're not attached in any way. And there are also little piles of rubble. Those aren't attached. You can just move those aside. And then this is our final painted product. You can see the torches are hanging in the walls. Those just push into little holes. We have our door. And one of the fun things about this terrain is the doors are functioning. They do open. But you can see the walls are painted on both sides. There are the little candles. And for the amount of effort put into painting it, I think that doesn't look half bad. The great thing being as well, because you have six sprues in the box and they are all exactly the same, and that means it's going to be really quick. By the time you've finished painting your Mechanica standard grey on the last element, you can go back to the first element and do your Ulthuan grey. By the time you've got through that, you can start doing the doors and you can just keep going through it and you will get the whole set painted in just a few hours, really. But that is it from me for now. Other than to say, once again, thank you to Archon Studio for sending in this terrain for review. 
there will be one more video where I will be painting the Dwarven mindset, so watch out for that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so, and hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.